the pulmonary circulatory system, uh, we are going to have a difference in the color. The arteries will be blue and the veins will be red. And that is, of course, because the arteries in the pulmonary system carry deoxygenated blood while the veins return oxygenated blood to the heart. So here we are with the uh, blood vessel model and we'll be discussing the major arteries and uh, veins of the circulatory system. So leaving the heart, we'll be leaving uh, from the right ventricle and ascending up into the pulmonary trunk, which is labeled here as number one uh, blue label. And from the pulmonary trunk, we break into the pulmonary arteries, which are labeled as two and three blue labels. This one is number two for the left. Number, sorry, this is number three for the left. Number two is over here on the right. Uh, the large arteries inside the lungs are called the lobar arteries. And we have two on the left side, which are not shown here. And we have the one, two, three on the right side, which are shown. After the blood is oxygenated in the lungs, it returns to the heart via the pulmonary veins. That's labeled right here as number two. And this returns oxygenated blood to the left atrium of the heart. Right in here. 36. And this is the posterior cerebral artery. Now if we go back, down to the common carotid, which again is labeled here number 11, coming, that's the second large branch off the aortic arch. After the common carotid, we have the interior, internal carotid, pardon me, and that's labeled number 26 on a blue label. Uh, from the internal carotid, we have the ophthalmic artery, which is labeled number 27. As you can see, this goes right out to the eye. Uh, as we continue up the internal carotid, we have two branches here. And we have uh, labeled number 29 on a blue label is the middle cerebral artery, right here. And labeled number 28 on a blue label, the other branch is the anterior cerebral artery. So uh, here we are finishing up the uh, arteries of the head and neck. And again, uh, after the ascending aorta into the aortic arch, the second branch from the aortic arch is labeled number 11. That is the common carotid. Uh, we just did number 26, which is the internal carotid. Now we're going to discuss the external carotid, which is labeled number 12. Uh, the external carotid extends all the way up and eventually leads into becoming the superficial temporal artery, which is labeled number 19 branches off the external carotid are the first large one is the facial artery. This is labeled number 16 on a blue label. And then another important branch is here number 20 and this is the maxillary artery. So now we'll be reviewing the arteries of the upper limb. Again we'll start here with the heart. Uh, we'll come out through the ascending aorta up into the aortic arch. The third large branch off the aortic arch is labeled number 37 on a blue label, and that is the left subclavian artery. And just a quick review, the first branch off of that extending into the neck and head is number 30, that's the um, vertebral artery. The second branch off the left subclavian is going to be the internal thoracic and that's labeled number 38 on a blue label. As we continue across the left subclavian, we eventually hit the axillary artery, which is the name of the artery in the armpit region. And extending just before the axillary, we have the lateral thoracic artery, which is labeled number 48 on a blue label right here. So, and then at the end of the axillary artery, we have here the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries. Uh, directly below this structure, the main artery becomes the brachial artery in the arm. As we extend down into the forearm, we 
have the radial artery, which is labeled number 60 on a blue label. And of course, opposite that will be the ulnar artery, which is labeled number 67 on a blue label. Branching off of the ulnar artery, we have the common interosseous artery, which is labeled number 69. And as we continue down into the hand, we have the palmar arches, the deep palmar arch. It's labeled 65. And the superficial palmar arch, labeled number 73 on the label. Now we'll be discussing the uh, arteries of the pelvis and the lower limbs. We're going to start right here with the abdominal aorta, which branches into the common iliac arteries, again labeled 100 blue. Uh, the common iliac branches into the internal iliac, which is number 102, and the external iliac, which is number 113. The external iliac continues on down to become the femoral artery, labeled 115. As this continues down through the knee region, it becomes the popliteal artery, labeled 122. This continues down and branches into this one here in the front, which is the anterior tibial artery, labeled 127. The branch behind that, of course, would be the posterior tibial artery, labeled 136. And, of course, lateral to that will be the fibular artery, labeled 137. So now we'll be discussing uh, veins, and we're going to start uh, with just some uh, major ones. We're going to start down here with the common iliac veins, which will both feed into the in inferior vena cava, which is labeled number 43 on a red sticker. That continues all the way up here. And then above this, we're going to have right here number 13, the internal jugular which is going to feed into the left subclavian. Both of these feed into the brachiocephalic, which is labeled here number 8. And this feeds into number 7, which is the superior vena cava. And both of the vena cavas feed right into the right atrium. So now we'll cover the uh, veins of the head and neck. Um, and we'll start here with number 21, uh, right here on the side. This is the external jugular vein. Feeds right into the left subclavian vein. Right next to it, at least right here, is labeled number 10. This is the verbal veins. And this continues and feeds right in right down here. first branch right here off of the brachiocephalic vein is number 13. This is the internal jugular. So of course we have the external jugular and here's the internal jugular. Branching off of the internal jugular right here is number 16. This is the facial vein. And if we continue up the internal jugular we will get to the superficial temporal vein, which is labeled number 20. Okay, so we again, we're going to be discussing the veins of the upper limb now. And of course, we'll be starting here with the subclavian vein. This is the left subclavian, it's number 23. As this uh, moves into the armpit region, of course, we become the axillary vein. It's labeled number 24. And as this continues on, number 27 is the brachial vein. As we continue down the arm, uh, branches from the brachial vein will be number 28, the radial vein, and number 29, which is the ulnar vein. Right there. As we come back up again through the axillary vein, the branch that is more lateral is the cephalic vein. It's labeled number 30. The more medial branch from the brachial is number 31. This is the basilic vein. And 
and these two join here and number 32 this is the medial antibrachial vein okay now we'll turn our little fellow around so we can see the back side and here we have dumping into the superior vena cava number 39 this is the azygous vein this is on the right side of the vertebral column as we continue down this becomes number 40 which is the hemiazygous vein and the branch which proceeds inferior is number 41 this is the accessory hemiazygous vein uh, so now we'll be discussing the veins of the abdomen. Uh, so again, well, we have number 55 is the splenic vein, and that obviously drains the spleen. One offshoot of the splenic vein is number 52, and this is the inferior mesenteric vein. And the last vein that we need to know is the hepatic portal vein, which is number 48, and it is right under here. It drains the lig liver. So now we're going to cover the veins of the lower limb. We're going to start right down here in the foot. Uh, the one labeled number 81 is the dorsalis pedis vein. It drains blood from the foot to the anterior tibial vein. And the anterior tibial is this one right here, number 79. The posterior tibial, of course, right behind it, number 78. Both of these feed into what becomes the popliteal vein in the knee area, and this feeds up into the femoral vein. Of course, I'll right here have number 76, the fibular vein. And as we come up here into the, fem the femoral vein, uh, the longest vein in the body is right here, number 70, and this is the great saphenous vein. The last one we have is number 74, it's right here, the small saphenous.